Looking ahead mm -hmm. to other things on Wednesday, I want to start with something that could or could not happen. We'll get to the games that definitely will happen, but the thing that could or could not happen, that'll be the big headline, Kenny Payne at Louisville. Lost last night in the AAC, ACC tournament to North Carolina State and then held another goofy press conference. Dead leg, uh, it's so funny, like, the, the reports are like, is expected to. Of course, they're expected to. Like, yeah, I, I, yeah. well, yeah, and he's going to get fired today. Like, I, yeah, I, I, I hear this three weeks ago or three months ago. Uh, after Louisville loses its first game in the ACC tournament, the school is expected to fire Kenny Payne. Ooh, look at me. I got a scoop. Of course, they're firing him. He's terrible. Um, four and 28 last season, eight and 24 last se this season. 12 and 52 in two years, finished 314th in the net last season, 214th in the net right now. He might really go down as the worst great job coach in the history of basketball. Who has been worse at a great job and also been so ill equipped to do it? I mean, the on the court stuff is just embarrassing. And then the press conferences are even worse, I would argue. Yeah, he had. And seek it out if you really must. But yes, he had a, after the game yesterday. I mean, it, it it led to, you know, him being asked about his future and all that kind of stuff. And then he kind of went back over, you know, why he said from the start it was going to take three or four years. We all know how you feel about that GP. Look around, coaches that are able to change it in one year, et cetera, et cetera. Completely valid, fair point. And the rebuttal to, to Kenny Payne. He had um, 12 wins at a program like Louisville. Uh, it's basically, ironically, it might be him and Naismith at Kansas. Remember, he couldn't get it. Good old, good old Jimmy couldn't get it done at KU back in the day. Invented the sport. Terrible head coach. So I think that. <laughs> so if you want good news for Kenny Payne, he's sitting there right alongside James Naismith as some of the worst coaches in the history of blue blood programs there. But uh, yeah, it's it's like it's a genuine bummer that it didn't work out. But we had this conversation a year ago. And he got another year because he is in a lot. I mean, the, the Louisville won four games last year. I mean, it was, it was a dumpster fire. And he got the second year. It's no better off. He will be. Louisville's literally flying in the air right now, going back to Louisville. It was stayed overnight in D.C. And then uh, that process will formally, I don't know, formally take place later this afternoon. And and then off we go with uh, with candidates candidates and a, and a search. But We'll see. Uh, we'll see how the program moves from here. Yes, you're you're right though. I mean, it it, it will the Kenny Payne era perish. It will go down in infamy, unfortunately. And it has been a weird run here from the Patino scandals to everything that's happened. Uh, when they hire the next coach, it's going to be what six different men who have led this program over a. What four year span, some five years, six year span, something like that. It's been, it's been, there's been so much change. They need stability in the worst way. That fan base is aching for it. And, uh, and I do want to give Mike Rutherford, who does a very good job covering Louisville, who, you know, all this stuff is happening and, and he's, he's got a, he's got a great sense of humor about this stuff because he's a, he's, He's, he's chronicled on radio and for SB Nation in the past, the program that he loves all these years and throughout the season. And, and uh, he said, what was this? I'm bringing it up right now. I think he said, now that this, well, I guess our fate is in the hands of the committee now. <laughs> I guess it's like the season's over. No at large coming to Louisville. The season's done. Search begins on Wednesday. We'll see who gets the job. They should have fired him after year one. And I'm not just saying that now. I said it after year one. Like, there, there are times when you can just see, like, this is a disaster. Like, I understand why they made the mistake they made, but it, it, it was very clear after one year, it's a mistake. You should change this now. Same thing with Tubby Smith at Memphis. I called that one after one year. I said they should fire him right now. And they said, well, you got, you, you know, you got to give him a second year. Okay, fine, then do it, do it in a year. They did it in a year. Same thing here. I, I swear to God, I had 50 conversations with people connected around Louisville. And I'd say, why are they not firing him? after the one year well you can't fire a, a, him after one year can you why not well you know it's just after one year okay well, well if he has another bad year will you do it then well of course okay well he's about to have another bad year here we are and then the stuff last night about like when i got the job i said it's going to take three or four years first off the local media in louisville i saw some tweets from them last night they were like he didn't say that all right that's not what he said i i wasn't there but local media was refuting that. 
sentiment last night. Beyond that, it doesn't take three or four years. It's nonsense. I've gone from feeling sorry for him to like being embarrassed for him. Like just totally ill-equipped in every aspect of the job. Can't coach him. Can't talk about it. Nothing. It takes three to four years. Why does Danny Sprinkle have a have a a, a team at Utah State in year one a million times better than the year than the team you have at Louisville in year two? What are we talking about? That exact situation is what drives people around these programs that have high expectations absolutely nuts. A Why do we have coach, someone? Yeah. A great coach in the era of NIL and the transfer portal can flip Louisville in a month. In a month. Mm-hmm. You need three to four years. If they hire the right guy, Louisville will be ranked in the preseason top 25 next season. If they hire the right guy. That is right. And, and to that point, you know, and, and, and tracking this search, uh, I've been told that Louisville, from an NIL standpoint, and this applies for football as well as men's basketball, this is what someone keyed into Louisville and I would trust their information on this. He said, there has not been a situation with NIL where a staff has kind of asked for something or inquired about something and basically been told no. Hasn't happened yet. Kenny just, he mismanaged the roster and everything that tied to that tremendously. And so whoever the next coach is going to be, and I do think the likes of Scott Drew, Dusty May, Amir Abdul Rahim, uh, Josh Schertz is on the list. I think those are going to be some of the targets, and there will be more for sure. Uh, the person that gets that job is going to have a war chest of NIL at their disposal. And from what I understand, Louisville is going to come, it is going to take this higher as it should. But, you know, for Cardinals fans listening that might be wondering, like, we just, Kenny Payne just happened. Like, is my program going nowhere? My understanding is that they are going to approach this search. And the hiring process and the infrastructure built around their next coach, like the job that it is, the, a top 10 job in the country, a blue blood program, a school that should be competing in the top 10 in the NIL space to build a roster, to go into the portal, to flip. And what Parrish, what you said is absolutely correct. If Louisville hires the right coach because of what Louisville is and the NIL at its disposal, there's almost no reason why the Cardinals should not be able to build a top 25 roster heading into next season. The only thing that would prevent that is that the fact that it's been so bad the past two years that I can understand why you might hit some resistance, maybe about maybe getting that one extra guy in the portal here and that one extra guy in the portal there, maybe. But if you get the right guy and where we are in college athletics right now, you should be able to build a, a roster that that brings real optimism and certainly hopes of NCAA tournament year one with your new coach. Jerome Tang did it in one year at Kansas State. Danny Sprinkle did it in one year at Utah State. Lamont Paris has done it in two years at South Carolina. Kenny Payne was handed the best job available two years ago. And at the very least among the power conference coaches, Nobody even came close to doing as poor of a job. There was also Greg Hare, New Mexico State. That obviously didn't go so well. Not a high major job, though. Right. Yeah, I said at the high, at the power conference level, at the high major level, um, it's not even close. Like he he took the best job available and ran it into a place that seems actually unimaginable. Like if you would have <laughs> like 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 unimaginable. The idea that Louisville would ever finish 314th in a computer ranking of men's college basketball is actually unimaginable. If you told me, GP, we're going to let your seven-year-old run the Louisville men's basketball program for the next year, I'd say he's going to finish top 300. (laughs) He's going to finish top 300. Your seven-year-old could finish top 300 with Louisville. Yes, easy. Give him an an NIL. No, no, I'll teach him how to add – I'll teach him how to. We've been working on addition and subtraction anyway, so give me give me his nil money. I'll teach. I will keep working on addition, and yes, he'll finish top three hundred in the net. I genuinely, I, I I'm not exaggerating. I cannot imagine anybody finishing outside of the top three hundred as the head coach of the Louisville men's basketball program. It's it has been really just one of the more bizarre and depressing spectacles that we've seen in college athletics recently in terms of like on the court competition, obviously. No, it's uh, Hey, and the era is almost officially over. And then 
for Louisville, the the waiting game will begin for Louisville fans because all your targets are sitting head coaches. Most of them, if not potentially all of them, could be coaching in in the NCAA tournament, and uh, and so that you know you got to wait on that, and 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 we'll see. We'll we'll save the the majority of like the candidate stuff for you know I guess a, a different episode there. Um, I, I'll, I, I'm i genuinely interested in see who gets this job and who takes this job because they are going to come aggressively. Um, Dusty May is obviously in, involved and, and targeted among other guys at Ohio State. And if Scott Drew says no and stays at Baylor, which I could see, but I mean, if Louisville is going to come and try and like say, Scott Drew will pay you 10 million, tell us no. Like it's, it could get pretty fascinating and interesting. Um, so yeah, this will be, this will be quite the search. I, I'm, I'm pretty confident that because of where Louisville is in the, in the landscape, I'm pretty confident that Cardinals fans, when you know who your next coach is, you're going to be happy. Um, the only one where I wonder if it leads to this spot, and I'm not even saying it won't work out, and Pat Forty made a great point on this when he wrote a story on Tuesday after Louisville got knocked out. It's like, if it is Josh Schertz, he's a hot name at a mid-major right now, and we don't even know if Josh Schertz is going to coach in the tournament at Indiana State. we got to wait till Selection Sunday on that. Um, but that would not be a proven guy as a source, a well-connected source told me on Tuesday, he's like, you're Louisville. You got to go get a final four coach. And I was like, I, I, I agree. If you're Louisville, that should be your target. There's no guarantee you'll get a final four coach. But as 40 mentioned, you know, back in 2001 or whatever, um, Tom Jurich was working and working and working to get Rick Pitino and he almost didn't have him. And Pitino almost said no. And he got Pitino. He's a big name then. And obviously it worked out, but the number two guy on that list in 2001 was not a proven coach. He's awesome now. He's a Hall of Famer. But the number two guy for Louisville more than two decades ago was Jay Wright. Right. So you can get someone who is not yet fully established at a place like this, and that coach can prove to be awesome. And I don't know if Jay Wright would have been a Hall of Famer if he had gone to Louisville. But just keep that in mind as well if you don't get you know big target one, big target two, big target three. Um, on, like, on the same type of thing, when Memphis fired Larry Finch in the late 90s, and was looking for its next head coach. They hired Tick Price. It, it was like it, the, the the racial tensions in the city were really high, and so the, the administration. I'm just saying this because I know it to be true. They felt like they had to replace Larry Finch with a minority candidate. They felt like they had to, so they really only considered minority candidates. They hired Tick Price, but do you know who was on the list? Oral, Ro I believe, it was Oral Roberts coach Bill Self. How about that? Yeah, there I you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I thought, to you, like, would Bill Self be Bill Self if he had taken it? Maybe. I don't know. Probably. He's awesome coach. He told, he told me he probably would not have taken it. That's what he said. But I think I remember him telling me, Larry Brown was telling him that he should. If he could get it, he should take it. One of those deals. And then, you know, a few two years later, maybe they ended up hiring John Calipari. But, um, yeah, I read that Pat's column as well. And I sort of chuckled when I saw that at the end. Like, if they wouldn't have got Patino, they would have hired, was it Hofstra's Jay Wright at the time? Hofstra, yeah, Jay Wright straight out of Hofstra, man. Yeah, how about that? Pretty crazy. No, yeah, that's uh, that's wild yeah. stuff. I know. So if I'm Louisville, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but just if I if I'm Louisville, I like Scott Drew can do whatever he wants. I don't tell other people what to do with their lives. Oh man, I would call Chris Mack and talk to him, and and be like, hey, so do you regret leaving a place where if you did just stay there, they might have put your name on the court someday? Mm -hmm. it just, I I'd be real careful about leaving well enough alone. 